we have here uh, this uh, this episode, this narrative we're going to say today is really a very action filled and very a uh, lot of interesting points to, to make here. Amazing action and amazing secrets also, you know. So really, we have to try to cover all, all the all the angles over here. A lot of things going on. Okay, so we say right. The first of all, Yaakov Avinu now is going to meet Esav right on the way back to Eretz Israel. And uh, first of all, we have to understand. You know, Eretz Israel is not such a small land. You know, I mean, you don't have to like when you go to Eretz Israel, you'd have to meet up with your brother. You could also, you know, miss your brother. You could also go somewhere else, not see him. So the question is like this, right? That if if Eretz Israel, you know, is a nice big land, why did he have to go and meet Esav at all, right? Why did he even call him? You know, why did he have to send messengers to him? Just go back to your land. Go back to your father. Go back to where where your family is, and stay there. Why? Why? Uh, why do you have to go and visit him? You know, if he's, if he, especially if he's bad news. So, if that's the case, why should you have to go and meet him at all? For what? Just you know, go to your house, go to your home, and stay there. What was the reason for that? That's a, it's a very good question. And by the way, the Chazal asked this question also. This question. It's not really my question. It's the question of Chazal. Can you give him the book, this book? Sure, sure. Please, take whatever you want. So, as we said, Rabotai, that the whole point is that go home, go to your place, and go go where you want to stay. What, what has to do with your brother? Your brother lives where he lives. Try to avoid him if he's a bad boy. So the Chazal asked the same question, exactly this question, right? which is what? Why do you have to pay attention to him? Ignore him. Like he doesn't exist. That's what you should do to a person who's a Rasha, you know? A wicked person. Stay away from the guy. What do you have to go meet up with him for? What, to, you know, what, you what? To, you want to stay away from him, but he's coming after you. Right, but the truth is that he went after Esav. You know, what, what does that mean? He sent messengers to him. He sent this, all this. And what are you sending messengers for? Go to your place and hang uh, What? Ignore the guy. It's like he doesn't exist. He's a bum. He's a punk. So why would you rather go and visit this punk for what? Just to to get to get into trouble? Why would you want to do that? That's the question, right? That uh, that the Chazal ask in the midrash. And by the way, they say that this was a mistake what he did. You know why? That's also right. But you know the things they say that uh, the fact that he called him. And you know, sent messengers and gave him gifts and all these things. And then, as you said, he bowed down also and all that stuff. He said, "You know what the, the, the Chazal say about that? They say that this was like he made him into something that he really wasn't. In other words, he puffed him up, he, he inflated him into something that he wasn't. He wasn't an important person. So you know, it's not important. The person is a wicked person. He's a sinner. You know. So what are you puffing him up for? Making him into an important guy? You know, when you give him attention." When you send gifts to him, when you bow down, all these things, you're you're the one who's making him important. He's not really important. When Netanyahu came to meet Obama, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's, no. that deserves an hour discussion by itself. Yeah, that whole discussion. Yeah, him, and Obama disrespected right. him and left him for hours. Since. Yes, that's what actually. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a good yeah. comparison. He's going to pay for that, by the way. He'll pay for that. <laughs> God will punish him for that. He will pay for that. He already did pay, by the way, but he's going to pay more. He's going to pay them more. Yeah. He may be even how by signing a multi-million dollar. They're, they're, they're looking to. Netflix. They're looking to convict him. You know that. Uh, yeah, they're looking to convict him already. They have. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, whatever. We're not going to talk about that. That's not a discussion. But he will pay for that. You know why? Because when you disgrace the the prime minister of Israel, you're disgracing God. That's what you're doing. You know, these are the people, of chosen people. You disgrace them. You know, this is a, you're like you're you're you know. I just say that, but it's like you're. You're doing it to God. That's what you're doing. You know, it's a person is—it's a terrible thing to do. He doesn't understand. You know, such a such a foolish man doesn't understand what what that means, the, the connotation of it. And by the way, I'm not telling you that uh, you know he's perfect, this guy, whatever. But no, still, you know, he's he's a prime minister of Israel. You know, that's it has a certain meaning. And by the way, Baruch Hashem, now our current president understands that. He understands very well this concept. He's a religious man. He believes in God. Believes in the Bible. He believes in. Uh, he knows. He knows what's what. He knows what's where. He knows what. You know. He knows what's what's doing. What's flying. He knows and understands. But there are people who don't understand these things. You know. They don't want to understand. Whatever. Anyway, getting back to what we're saying all the time, that the Chazal say that this was a big mistake. What was the mistake? You made him into something important. You made him into a king also. You know. Like in other words, Esav, out of this whole deal, got malchut also. Got kingdom. You know. 
What does that mean? Just ignore him. He's a bum. Just go to your go to your place. Don't give him importance. Don't 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 make him into some kind of a public figure, some kind of an important you know important personality. <clears throat> Just ignore the guy. So that that was a mistake that he made, according to the Chazal, according to the Midrash. Uh, but you know, there's also another angle to this, which I saw in the Zohar Kadosh. A little bit different. It probably is arguing on this Midrash a little bit. So it seems to be some kind of a contradiction here. What is the Zohar Kadosh saying? Zohar is saying is that. Uh, really, what Yaakov did was a very good thing. <laughs> Just the opposite way of looking at it, right? So what's so good about it? The good thing is like this, right? That he basically gave the kingdom of this world on a civil power to Esau. He said, you know what? It's all yours. Here, buddy, take it. It's all yours. So this was a good thing to do, according to the Zohar Kadosh. Why? Because what he actually told him was in effect like this, right? He said, listen, Olam Azeh belongs to you. You know, so go take your malchut. You know, start start your malchut and finish your malchut, and then I'm coming next after you. You know, that's it. I'm I'm online. I'm holding on to your heel. You know, Yaakov, Yak Ekev. You know, I'm holding on. So right after you finish, I'm coming right right there. I'm I'm going to be right there after you. You know, uh, and by the way, the Chazal say even something even more. Right, that not only Yaakov is coming after Esav to set up his kingdom. But he's going to come a little bit before Esav even finishes. In other words, you know, just like, just like we see now, right? That they came back, you understand? These people, even before Esav got a chance to finish his malchut. And that's exactly what the Chazal said. That's what's going to happen, right? That Yaakov is going to come back with his malchut, with his kingdom, even before Esav gets a chance to finish. <laughs> it's an amazing thing, you know? It's exactly what we see now, Lichora, apparently. That's exactly what we see. Everything was fulfilled, you know. Everything, all the promises that Kadosh Baruch Hu made, everything is going to be fulfilled to the to the T, to the letter, you know. All the dots, the eyes dotted, the T's crossed, everything. Nothing is going to be uh, let go, you know. Nothing is going to be uh, uh, abandoned, tucked under the rug. Everything will be fulfilled, just like everything was promised. So, what does that mean? That this was actually a good thing according to Zohar. Why? Because listen, you know, this is Olam Azeh. We had a fight, we had a conflict. You got Olam Azeh, so take it. I'm giving it to you. Go for it, you know? Let's see what you can do. You're going to be a good boy. You're going to be a good king. You're going to be a good, make a good malchut. Let's see what you're made out of. You know? It's yours. Take it. Once you're done, I'm right there. <coughs> right, right right, around the corner, right? I'm coming for you. I'm coming. So that's, that's what Yaakov told him. So this was actually a very good thing. Why? Because in order to get what's coming to you, you also first, you first have to give him what's coming to him. Because he's first, you understand? He's, he's, uh, he's on Lama Zeh, first. So give it to him. So you see two different angles over here. The Midrash and the Zohar Kadosh. Lichor, it's like arguing one with the other. You know, a little bit of a, of a machloket, whatever. So really what? According to Zohar, this was a good thing that he did, that he gave him the kingdom. He says, here, you know, you're the king. I bow down to you. You know, seven times he bowed down. You're going to see, right? He bowed down seven times to Esau. Right? Uh, so what does that mean? Right here, you know, I'm bowing down to you. You're my master. You're my king. Go for it. It's all yours, buddy. It was a good thing. Right, so machlok between the midrash and the and, and the Zohar Kadosh. Anyway, interesting thing, right? That uh, I want to read the psukim a little bit. Uh, so, what happens now? Right? Yaakov, now as we spoke about last week, wants now to send gifts to uh, to to Esau to appease his wrath, to appease his anger, you know, whatever. So he sends them from all the animals that he has a portion, you know, like a percentage of each animal. The donkeys, the camels, the, the you know the, the livestock, all this it sends everything, you know, percentage of everything. This way, right, he's got everything. Uh Esav is gonna see all these things, these gifts coming to him. And by the way, the Chazal say, even though the Pasuk doesn't talk about that, that he also sent jewels also, you know, like uh, the, uh, precious stones, diamonds, rubies, you know, the some emeralds, he sent them also that. Right, uh, it's, it's alluded to in the pasuk a little bit. There's an illusion because he was rich. You know, when he when he left Lavan, he was already rich. He was a millionaire already. He became a millionaire. Right? Why is that? Because you know he pulled that trick with the you know, that trick. So once he pulled that trick, he became a millionaire. You understand? That's what happened. So because of that, he had all kinds of things, and he took a percentage of everything that he had and he gave all to he sent it to Esav. But by the way, the Chazal say right that this was not the only thing that he sent. He didn't only send gifts, right? There was also the other side of the equation, the other side of the coin. What does that mean? That he also sent, right? It says Malachim he sent, right? Now, according to the simple meaning, Malachim means, you know, like shliach, agent, right? Agents, you know, uh, messengers. But 
According to the other meaning, Malach means the angel, right? So what does that mean? The Chazal say that he actually sent angels to, to, to Esav. You understand? Uh, malachim, real real angels. So what was the what was the point of sending angels, you know? If you want to send a gift, you can send it with a guy, with a man, right? Put it in his car, put it in his donkey, whatever. He will take it for you. What have to send angels for? What's, what's the point of sending angels? So they say the Chazal, by the way, these angels were like tough guys, you know what I'm saying? Marauders. Angel, marauder angels, you know? So what they did was like this, right? They went to Esau, these angels, right? And they disguised themselves as men. Like tough guys, you know? Like you know, brutal, brutal people, you know? Brutal guys. Brutos. So they went over there, right? And they, they, Esau was there with 400 men. He had 400 guys with him. You know, He had like an army with him. Like, you know. So a little mafia he had over there, right? So what happened was that uh, these angels came and they started to beat up these guys, you know, like, tuk, 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 bah, bah, punches, you know, duk, 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 you know. So Esav is also getting beaten up, you understand? Nobody's being spared over here, you know? Everybody's getting punches in the face, kicks, you know, this, you know? Karate, be kung fu, be you know? All the whole thing, you understand? It's $10,000, So these angels are, like, just, like, busting them up, busting them up, bah, 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 bah. So it's like they're, they're in trouble, you know, they can't do nothing. You know, you can't fight with an angel. How are you going to fight with an angel? You understand? These are the, they're, they're invincible, these people. A lot of fun in the Torah. Right? Yeah, so, <laughs> so that happens like this, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so comes, uh, now comes, right, uh, and, and the angels start to ask them questions also, right? So they say, who, who are you? Who are you? Who do you belong to? What, who's your family, right? As if, like, you know, they came to suspect them, you know, maybe they're, they're crooks, you know, thieves, whatever. So then, who are you, you know? In other words, if you tell us who you are, maybe we'll, we'll, let, we'll let you off the hook. So first of all, right, Esav comes, Esav, and he says, you know what? Uh, they said, we're, we're the, I'm the son of Abraham, you know, grandson of Abraham. A very important person, you know, one of the most important people. They keep on beating him up, you know, Dah, we don't care about that, you know? We, we don't care about Abraham. Dah, 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 dah. You know, so then they said, you know what? I'm, I'm the son of Yitzchak. Also, a very important, important person. You know? they keep on beating them. Bach, buch, bach, bach. You know, bloody nose, look at this, you know, blue eyes, you know, this and everything, right? Whatever. So then he said, Oh, so I'm, I'm the brother of Yaakov. He you know, says, Ah, you're the brother of Yaakov. Okay. So then they let off, you understand? Why do, why do they do the, the, these angels? Because they wanted to show him, right, that Yaakov is, a, is an important guy, you know, you don't mess with him, you know? If you're his brother, we'll let you off the hook, you know? But otherwise, we're going to have to finish you off. You know, so Esau got beaten up, you know, his men over there, you know, all like blue, you know, blue and black, black and blue, you know, whatever, that's what happened. So now he sends also the gifts, you know what I mean? So that, that was a two, two-pronged two approach over here, you understand? One with the good side, one from the bad side, you know, both, 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 uh, both sides. Uh, so now, right, all of a sudden they come and he separates the gifts also, right? Each animal is separate from the other, like distance he puts between them, you know, let's say like 100 feet between each one. 100 yards, whatever it is. Why did he put distance between them? In order that the gift should look more, you know, more, appealing. right, appealing, right, exactly. Because when you, do, when you do it in one shot, it doesn't look so important, you know? When you do one after the other, and so, oh, this one, oh, that one too? Oh, this one too? Oh, 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 oh. You know, one after the other? So it's like, ah, oh. So, you know, Esav was a very materialistic guy, you know? So when he saw all that materialistic stuff, so he was like, oh, you know, wow, you know, my brother, wow. He honors me so much. So then he started to calm down a little bit. You know, this assuaged his, his, his anger, you know, at, at Yaakov. So it goes on to say, right, by 10, as we said, right, he gave him all these things. Uh, so afterwards, so not only that, they told him also another thing, right, which is what? They said that, um, you know what? Not only we're going to let you off the hook because you're Yaakov's brother, but he's right behind us now. You know, he's coming to meet you. So you better get ready. You know, he's coming to meet you. Get ready. Get, you know, dress. Okay, so that's that's what happens, right? So this tactic he uses, you know, Yaakov, as we said, right, again, to avoid war, you know, to avoid a conflict over here because he doesn't want to kill, he doesn't want murders going on here and all these things, right, as we said last week. So now all of a sudden, right, this episode occurs. And by the way, Yaakov Avinu, uh, they say the Chazal, right, that he was punished. Uh, and this is why he had to send the gifts to Esav. This was also punishment, you understand? So we have to also learn from here something. There's also a moral lesson over there. What's the moral lesson? The moral lesson is, they say the Chazal, right, that the reason Yaakov was punished was because what? He didn't send, he, when he left Eretz Israel, if you remember, we, we spoke about this, right? He made a nether, he made a vow. 
that what? That he's going to give 10% of everything he makes. Maser, you know? He's going to give 10% to the, to the, to the priests, the Kohanim. To the, like, there was a coin also in that generation. So there was, there was a Shem, right? Malchit Tzedek. So anyway, what happened was that now, 20 years after that, he made the nether. He was already 20 years not fulfilled. So because of that, Kadosh Baruch punished him, you understand? He said, 20 years you waited. You know, it didn't fulfill your nether. And by the way, you learn from here several things, right? One thing is that when you make a nether to give some kind of a donation, you should give it as fast as possible. Don't wait until two years, three years, then you wait 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you know? And all of a sudden, the person is going to be punished because of that. He's, he's delaying it so much. You know, when you, when you say something, fulfill your word, you know, keep your word, be a man of your word, you know? Or at least, what, say belly nether, you know? If you cannot... You know, just in case. If you say belly nether, so that this way it won't be nether. You know, at least it won't be a vow. You don't get punished, you know. So belly, belly nether, belly nether, like with Georgians, you know, they say whatever. Belly nether. That's, 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 the, that's the thing you have to do. But the truth is, right, even if you say belly nether, there's still more obligation to give, you know, the money that you that you pledged. Because of, uh, you know, bal uh, de baro, right? You should keep your word. Man of your word. Be able to say, you, you, you said something, keep your word. You know, so they say, right, that what the Chazal is saying, we learn from here that a person shouldn't delay his, his, his nether. If he made a nether, pay it up, pay up, you know. You, you, you donated something to the shul, you know, to yeshiva, or whatever. Pay it up, you know. What are you, what are you waiting for? What, you made it for Mashiach? Then you're going to pay? What's, what's the point, right? If you don't want to give, so don't make a nether, you know. But, you know, you can't have it both ways, you know what I mean? If you, if you make a nether, pay. If you don't want to pay, just shut your mouth, you know. Keep your mouth shut. What's it? you want to be like a big shot? Well, make yourself look good, you know, in front of everybody. That's not the way it is. You know? That's the way it is, you know. If you don't have, if a person don't have this amount, mm-hmm. and also you said ten thousand dollar to the show, yeah. no, it's it's gnevat hadat. Yeah, it is. It is. You're right. Absolutely. It's a kurdichat chuisa. Yeah. Who is kurdichat? It's a, you can't do that. Yeah, it's it's a yeah, false statement. It's a false, you know. Without bringing that, there is a mitzvah. I mean, yeah, they'll they'll get you. You know, it's a perjury trap. You know, they'll get you. And the FBI, FBI will get you. <laughs> okay, so uh, Rabbi that's that's exactly what happened. But also, there's another thing we learn from here, right? They say Chazal that if a person, you know, they say that a person every year is judged, right? Rosh Hashanah become or judged. So they say, right, that they judge two things on Rosh Hashanah. They judge everything, but two particular things I want to speak about, which is what? How much money a person is going to make that year? How much is going to be his income? Number one. Number two, how much he's going to lose also? There's also amount of money that a person loses every year. You know, all kinds of things, you know, the accidents, this, all kinds of stuff, right? So they also decide how much he's going to lose. How much he's going to make, how much he's going to lose. Whatever. Okay. So what happens like this, right? Now, if a, person, if a person is smart, what does he do, right? That year he'll give a lot of tzedakah. So all the money that he was supposed to lose will go to tzedakah, you understand? He lost it for a mitzvah. But if he's going to be a cheap, stingy guy, you understand? So then what? What's going to be, right? Instead of going to tzedakah, it's going to go to Esav. You understand? That's what we, we see over here, right? Yep. Esav will come and take it, just like over here, Yaakov. Because he didn't pay up his money on time, he had to give it to Esav in the end. At least a part of it, right? Because the truth is, the Chazal say that he also gave Maser from that money. When he came back later on, right? He gave. But the problem was he gave it very late and therefore he had to also give some to Esav. He had to give it to both sides, you know, to the good side to the bad side. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's exactly what happened, right? And by the way, that's what you see, you should know, right? That a person who doesn't give tzedakah enough every year, what happens? He gets parking tickets, you know, violations, you know, this moving violation, this violation, he gets sued over here, he gets loses money over here. Away. Exactly. <laughs> That's going to Esau. That's going to Esau, all that stuff. You understand? That's Esau, right? The, the big, the long arm, Uncle Sam, you know, whatever. That's, 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 Uncle Esau. So it's going over there, same same idea. Uh, so the, the, le- the more you give to the tzedakah, the less you're going to give to Esau. That's the way it is, right? That's what we learn from here. It's a very important lesson to, to the person has to know. It's here or there, right? You're going to lose that money anyway. Whatever they decide you're going to lose, you're going to lose. Either way, right? Okay. So anyway, getting back to what we're saying all the time, that this is why he had to... Uh, but Yaakov was now really upset about this also. He was angry, you know? Why was he angry? Because he said, you know, like, why do I have to do all this, you know? This effort to, to assuage... The wrath of Esav, you know, it's just so hard sending him gifts and this and all this stuff, preparing for war, preparing for this, preparing for that, everything, all this tirchao, you know, all this uh, uh, cumbersome, you know, uh, things going on. I have to do, because why? Because of Esav, you know, my brother's giving me a big headache. But you know why he was angry? 
because he didn't remember at this time of, about the nether. He forgot about it. You understand? So then when he came back to Eretz Yisrael, Kedosh Baruch reminded him, Ah, don't you remember? You made the nether? Then we'll pay it up now. Huh? It's late already. But the problem was, right at this point in time, right now, he didn't remember it yet. So because of that, he uh, he lost track, and because of that, he was angry, you know, because it, it, it was frustrating him, this whole this whole situation. I had to give this guy money, I had to give this guy money, you know, I was losing so much money. Well, let me say a question. Yeah. Those four guys, the bounty hunters, they will not enough to scare us out away? Ah. Uh. Why should he go through and giving him extra gifts? Send him the malachim, tell him, hey, what, you leave this guy alone, you'll yeah. be safe. You know what it is? Why uh, extra bright? Yeah, you're actually very, you're scared. actually very right. But you have to know one thing: that in this world, when you're dealing with a big enemy like that, you have to cover from all sides. You understand? In other words, you have to do a multiple kind of strategy, from the good side, from the bad side, just in case this works, this won't work. This, you know, the, the, cover your bed. Cover your. It's, like insu- it's you know what the, you know what they call in the FBI, right? Insurance policy. You know what they're talking about? It's an insurance policy, just in case it doesn't work. <laughs> Just, so we'll do this. That's what that's what that's the way it is. And by the way, you should know that now, right? You see, right? The president Trump, right? That he's going to you know North Korea and this and that. When he does this negotiation, you understand? Uh, in a sense, there's also behind the scenes a lot of stuff going on. We, we don't see. You know, there's a lot of promises that they you know giving them good stuff. Also, they're gonna, we're going to give you gifts. You're going to get money. You're going to get benefits. You're going to get investments. They don't show all that in public, yeah. you understand? But inside the, you know, inside the rooms, you know, where the old smokers, you know, they're smoking, and they're talking a lot of stuff that we don't see. And by the way, that's what they're doing, exactly like this, right? From both sides, they're covering, you understand? The good side, oh, we'll give you everything, but you don't want? Oh, then we're going to give you on your head, right? Bah! You know? If you, if you agree, everything good we'll give you. Right? If you don't agree, bah! On your head, jah! That's it, that's what you're going to get. You understand? You have to cover both sides. It's a smart way of doing things, you know. It's a, a person who's really, you know, well-rounded, uh, well-rounded personality. He knows how to cover it from all, all sides. Also, why Yaakov Avinu he cut his people for two pieces? Right, exactly. We talked about that last week. Yeah, yes, we talked about that. So, uh, absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right. So, there's like you know, he used every type of strategy, right, that a person can possibly get. That's 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 what it was. You understand? So, uh, and by the way, this is talked about in the Chazal. You know, Shlomo Melech talks about this. That what you see, he he, uh, he points out in his books that that the um, contemplation of the kingdoms is a very deep thing. What does that mean? That when a person runs a government, you know, or whatever, and makes negotiations and all kinds of, they contemplate every side, you know, like they try to look at from every 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 you know every every variation, you know, every every possibility, every outcome it comes out this way. They they weigh everything like very very in a very deep manner, very comprehensive manner, and that's why you know like a president usually has like many many advisors. We're talking like hundreds of advisors, you know, sometimes even thousands, or whatever. He takes advice from this guy, from this guy, and they take a lot of advice because a one person cannot contemplate all the, all the sides, you know, all the, all the, all these things. It has to be done by many many people together, working together in, as a team. You know, it's a very complicated thing. This 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 whole thing. That's the way negotiations are done. That's the way you know these things are done. Strategy, all these things. Yaakov Avinu, Baruch Hashem, he was a smart man. You know, he was the smartest man. So because of that, he knew how to do all these things. Okay, so let's go on a little bit. So now, right, the narrative also all of a sudden shifts to a different angle over here, right? Uh, in other words, you would think now he's going to meet up with Esav all of a sudden, right? But now, before he meets up with Esav, we have a different thing going on, different different story going on here. What's the story, right? That all of a sudden. Yaakov, right, that night where he separated, as you said, like the camps into two and all that. So what happened was that he crossed over the Yabok River. There's a river called in, in, uh, in Arizona called Yabok. It's in the north, you know, like in Syria, like the coast of Syria, you know, whatever. So that river he crossed over in order to go into Arizona. And what happened was that he, then he realized that he forgot some dishes and pots and pans on the other side. He left some things over there. Utensils. You understand? So because of that, he went back uh, to cross over the water again. It was a big exertion to do this. You understand? He goes back there again to cross over the water to get the retrieve, retrieve all that stuff. He, he didn't want to leave it there. You know? So, and by the way, from here, the Chazal say, they learn something interesting, right? They say that the possessions of a tzaddik, they're very dear to him. You know? He doesn't want to get rid of anything that he has. 
He doesn't. He doesn't abandon like any any possession. You know, he wants everything. Everything is dear to him. Everything is is important to him. Because whatever is not important to him, he doesn't. He doesn't keep it. You understand? So whatever he keeps, that's like crucial. He needs that. You know. Also, so he doesn't he, abandon anything. Also, is he risking his life? I'm uh, sorry. What was that again? He was risking. His he life. didn't know that, by the way. He didn't know that he was risking but his, when his he life. Crossing alone to the other side. Right. There is some danger there. Right. Exactly. There is some danger. You're right. You're right, moment. Shalom. You're right. But you know, because he didn't want to lose the money. You know, Chisaron Kis. Because of that, he went. You know, there was some risk there involved. You're right. Yeah. There was risk involved. But anyway, he went back there. You understand? He said, I'm just going to hop over, you know, hop over, bring it back, and we'll get on our way, get moving, right? All of a sudden, then he hops over, and he gets attacked over there. He gets mugged. You understand? Gets, gets, gets mugged. What happened, right? So comes now to him an angel over there and attacks him. Right? And starts to have a struggle with him, right? Beating him up. Bach, bach, bach. Just like, you know, Esav, you know, he had his. Angels beating him up. Now comes also angel to beat him up. You understand? Same thing, same idea. So you see now, by the way, interesting thing, right? That just like Yaakov, he sent his angels to beat up Esav. Also, Esav, in a sense, sent over here his angel now, because this was the angel of Esav. You understand? That came to fight with Yaakov. This was the angel of Esav. Every nation has an angel, you know, guardian angel in in, in, in Shemaim. So what happened was that now the guardian angel of Esav came to beat up Yaakov. <laughs> that's what he came for but this is not the same thing as what happened with Esau well, you understand you get, yeah. you're getting a permission from God to do something like that I'll explain to you I'll explain to you this is, a, this is a kind of like a deep thing over here it needs to be explained you know that uh, what happened was like this right uh, that as, as Shalom says right this is a very good question what he's asking what is, how does this angel get permission to do this right so first of all before we, we get to that question we have to understand one thing right we understand who was this angel, right? So the Chazal say it was Satan. Satan is also an angel of God. You understand? He's he's one of the bad boys, one of the bad angels. He's the chief bad angel, the chief guy, chief chief uh, chief marauder, right? Chief murderer, chief executioner. That's what the Satan is. So Satan was the angel is the angel of Esav. You understand? Just like everybody has their angel, uh, so the angel of Esav is Satan. And we already discussed that, by the way, right? How that came about. Because as we said, right, that when Yitzchak gave the bracha to Yaakov, so there was nothing left for him. So the only thing that was left for him was from the side of Satan. So ya- Yaakov, basically, Esav, at that time agreed to go to Satan. He agreed to be on that side. Because of that, now the Satan guards Esav. He guards him. So now he came, right, that what? He came to attack Yaakov. So now ask a question, right? What was the right to do that? So you know what his right was? What you know, the Chazal say the Satan has three jobs basically, right? As 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 the angel, what's his three jobs? One is to cause a person to sin. He seduces you into sinning, right? He has lots of tools now to do that, right? Internet, you have TV, you have this, all kinds of stuff, right? All these things seduce a person. They looks at them something. He wants that, you know, sin to do. He sees it on the internet and he jumps forward. You know, that's the first thing is to see. So number one job of Satan is to seduce a person to sin. You understand? To lure him in, just like he did with the Adam, you know, Adam Arishon and his wife. That was the whole idea. So the the, the lure of the Satan, right? Uh, first, he lures people to, to sin. You like this, you know? You want to go for it? Here, check check this out. You don't like that? Check this one out. You don't like this? Check this one out. It gives you a lot of choices. You know? What about this one? What about this one? Okay, so one of them probably is going to take right, whatever. So the thing is now, Satan has that's his first job. To cause a person to sin. Number two, what's the second job? To accuse a person. He's an accuser, right? He accuses. What does that mean? Once a person, he lures him into sinning, so then the next job is he comes to Hashem, and he says, oh, you know, this guy, he sinned, you know? He needs to be punished for that. Accuser. Right? The same guy. Same guy who causes the person to sin, now comes and accuses him in front of Hashem. Ah, you see this guy, you know what he did? You know what he did last night? Ah, yeah, 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 big sin he did. Accuses him. So then, what's the next job? Number three. Punish. Job number three, punish, exactly. Kill. Right? Kill a person. Or punish, exactly like you said. It can come also, it can also lead to death. So what? The next step is like this, right? He says to Hashem like this, you know what? Uh, this guy, you know, that he sent, right? You know, I bought you all the the the, 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 the wrap, the sheets, sheets, the file. I bought you his file. I showed you everything, the videos, everything. No, what's his punishment? So they, okay, you agree that I should kill him? Take his neshama? Kill him? So if Hashem agrees, he goes and he kills him. That's the third job of Satan, to kill. 
You understand? So basically, he has three jobs. That's, that's what it is. So if, if that's the case, and I understand, what happened was like this. The Esav is just, you know, the, the, the physical element of this in, this, in this world, right? The physical embody, embodiment of this. Yeah. So even the, the terrible things that happen yeah. are in God's hands, basically. Everything's in God's hands, right, exactly. The bad side, the good side, everything, yeah. So the yeah. bad side cannot function... Without God, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. No question about that. But isn't God supposed yeah. to be all good? I mean, he's wonderful. That's a very good question, by the way. It's an amazing question. We, we yeah. depend on him just to save us, no matter what, and to forgive us. And, right, you know. right. But you know what it is? That this is considered to be also good. Why? Because a person, the Gosh Baruch Hu wants us to earn our, our, our reward, you know? So mm -hmm. he wants us to, to train us to be good, you know, on our own volition, on our own... Uh, merit, you know, on our own. So therefore, th this this system works. The accusation, in order to train a person to make him better. Not only that, what you, it's look on your eyes that it's bad. It's not mean that in uh, God the eyes it's uh, bad. It's been six thousand years, thing. and he hasn't best, trained us yet. Maybe it's the best thing for you. I think he should give up by now. <laughs> He's never going to give up. <laughs> you know what I'm He's never going to give up. That's the whole thing. You have to understand. for it, just like Paris. People, people are dying everything in this, uh, uh, you know, training process. You know what I'm saying? We're yes, dying. yes, people are dying. You know. By the way, this is a very deep philosophical question. Yeah. I, I don't think there's nothing this time to look at, go too deep into this because I want to get back to the narrative over here. But maybe one day Bezat Hashem will talk about this because it's a very deep subject. I'll very deep. Up tonight. Okay, why not? Be my guest. You're always welcome, 24 seven, David. Be part of it also. So, <laughs> so Rabbi now what what's the story over here? The story's like this, right? That Yaakov went to Lavan for 20 years. He's been there, right? Lavan is a very bad boy, right? As we discussed already, how bad he really was. We didn't get into everything, by the way, how deep the depths of his of badness, right? But the whole point was like this, right? That Lavan is what? Is a bad boy. So you would think that a person who goes over there to live with him for 20 years is going to be influenced by that. So he's going to learn his ways, his evil ways, his diabolical ways, right? All these things. And he may be soiled, you know, spiritually because of the presence of... 20 years with Laban. So what was the whole thing now, right? The whole thing was that Yaakov was there for 20 years. So when he left, when he left Laban, the whole point is now that what? That Yaakov is saying to Esav like this, you know, he sent him angels, right? As we said. One of the things that the angels told him was like this, you know, I was 20 years with Laban. But you know what? Tariag mitzvot shamarti. I kept all the mitzvot. Everything. You mean what? He wasn't able to corrupt me at all in any manner whatsoever. I was perfect with him. You understand? So, oh, Esav gets this message, right? That what? Oh, I was a good boy. Oh, yeah, you were such a good boy. You know what? Let's check you out. What, what does that mean? Let's check, send over the Satan to you, right? And let him check you. Because the angel, Satan, knows how to check. He knows how to check everything, you know? So what does that mean? That when the Satan came now to beat up ya ya Yaakov, on what grounds was he doing that? You know what grounds? He wanted to see maybe there was some sin that he had. And he could attack him, you know, based on that. You understand? That was the whole thing. Mm. So what does that mean? You know, as the Chazal teaches, by the way, that what? That there, we have 613 mitzvot in the Torah, right? 613. This Each one corresponds to one limb of the body. Right? That's how it is. We have 613 limbs and, and uh, joints in the body. Mm. So now what happens like this? The Mekubalim say that when a person does a certain sin which corresponds to a certain limb, that limb gets sick, gets ill, you know? And by the way, illness comes from that, from, from the sin it comes. That's where it comes from. You understand? Illness comes from sin. So what happens is like this, right? That now, the Satan wants to check Yaakov and see maybe one of his limbs is not doing so good. Maybe he, he did a sin, you know? Let's check it out. You know? Let's try over here the shoulder, let's try the arms, let's try the legs, let's try the stomach. Let's see if we can get him somewhere, you know. And that's why he's coming to attack, you understand? He's checking everything. That's all they did. Checking this limb, checking that limb. So what happened was, what happened was like this, right? That they were struggling all night. Can you imagine? This was all night struggle. Big wrestling, you know? You talk about wrestling, you know? This is like the biggest match that there ever was, wrestling match. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know? Worldwide Federation, whatever it's called, right? Whatever it's called. Right? No. This was, this was, <laughs> this was the biggest, biggest wrestling match that there ever was. Okay? So it comes now, right? All night, Satan is looking for something, a weak spot. 
in his body, you know? Can't find nothing, zero. Ay, bye, bye. Can't find anything in his body. Nothing wrong. Everything healthy. So, now what happens is that what? Satan realizes, not only can't find anything to attack, but Yaakov is now beating him up. You understand? Beating, he's got a headlock, you know, holding him like this. He says, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish you off. Buddy, what are you coming to attack him for? On what grounds did you come to attack me? What? You think I was I sinned? I told you I didn't sin. So he's sinless. So he was sinless. It was yeah. that was all thing. You understand? All he was totally sinless. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that now he's got Satan in a headlock like this, about to finish him off. You understand? Satan was 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 beaten by him. So now, right, he's holding him like this, and it's, dawn is coming. Right, four o'clock in the morning, dawn, and the shachar. So Satan says, you know what, do me a favor, let me go, buddy, because I got to go now. You know, I have to go up back back to heaven. I can't stay here anymore. So do me a favor, Leon, let me go. He's holding him in a headlock. <laughs> let me out of here. So, so Yaakov says, you know what, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. You have to give me a blessing. You know? What was the whole point over here? You know, why do you want the blessing from Satan? What's the, what's the whole, what's the whole, uh, you know, you want a blessing from God. Why are you from Satan? You want a blessing. So the whole point was what? He wanted to be, him to, to be more dead, to admit that there was nothing wrong. You know, he was perfect. So therefore, if I'm perfect, even you have to bless me. Mm -hmm. Even Satan has to bless you when you're perfect. You understand? He has to say, in other words, what happens is like this, right? When they check you and you're just, your your din, your just, your, your uh, mishpat, you know, your, your, your case, court case, came out, you're totally innocent. So even the Satan has to say, Amen. When they bless you, he has to say, Amen. Can you imagine such an Ibadah? He has to bless you also. So tells, tells him, Yaakov, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Right? So Satan tries to get out of it, you know, tries to weasel his way out of this, you know? So what do you tell? Tells him like this, right? Uh, look what he says. Is this where Jacob wrestles with the angel? Exactly. That's that lame. Yes. So it says, So Satan tells him like this. He says, You know what? Do me a favor. Let me go now. You know, it's gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to bless you like later. Why? Because when you come to meet Esav, right? Over there, I'll be there and I'll bless you over there. You know, and uh, everything will be okay. Let me go now because now I have to, I have to, I have emergency. I got to go up, you know, dahuf. I have to be up there. Why? Because I have to sing to Hashem. They sing to Hashem in the morning, you know, there's like a shift. The angels, they sing to Hashem. So I have to, I have to go and sing now. I have my, my singing job. So let me go, you know, I, I, I got to go now. I'll bless you later. So Yaakov says, no, I'm not letting you go until you bless me now. Right? He says, you know what? He says, I'll tell you something. What's going to be is like this, right? Like, Baruch Hu, when you enter into Eretz Israel now, he's going to come to you and bless you, and I'll be there also to say amen. And he says, you know what? Your, your name is going to be changed. You're going to get a new name, right? Why? Because you, when you were born, they gave you the name Yaakov. Now they're going to call you Israel, Right? It's an upgrade. Upgrade name, right? Whatever. So what's, uh, what's the story with this upgrade? So the Satan tells him, he says, listen, you know, the word Yaakov, right, it's, what's the mashmaut, the implication of, of this word, Yaakov? The implication is that you like a, you do like tricks, you know, on people, like, you know, and trick them, and, you know, by, with trickery, you're able to get something from them, you know, that's, that's, that's the implication. So meanwhile, that, the whole thing was that Yaakov wanted to, uh, you know, he took the brachot from Esav, he took the blessings, he took the bechorah, he took the firstborn, everything he did like with a little bit of trickery, you know? Tricky stuff, right? As we, we talked about this, right? We, talk, we said how we tricked him with this and with that, all kinds of tricks. So now he has to be upgraded, right? What does that mean? That now he's coming straight ahead and saying, listen, you know, these brachot are mine. The firstborn right is mine. Everything is mine. Justly, you know, not because I'm, I'm doing some kind of trick. I deserve it. That's all, you know? I, it's, it's straight ahead. So now, right, says the Satan to, to Yaakov, you know what? You're going to get a new name, Israel. You know why? Because that name, Israel. It has a different implication, mashmaut. You know what's the implication, right? Mm -hmm. That you fought with men, and you fought with uh, angels. angels, right? Right, El, right? God, you know, like God, whatever. And he says you defeated everybody. In other words, not because you were, you did pull tricks, because you deserve it. You were perfect, sinless person. And by the way, uh, the language here is is very interesting, right? Why?
because it says right that you what you fought with men. So who were the men that he fought with? With Esav and with Lavan. Right? He was able to win them over, no problem. He says, oh, but you also fought with God, Elohim. It says right. So he fought with God, Yaakov. What? what he, <laughs> he, you know, he didn't fight with God. You know? Nobody fights with God. So what's the, what's the story? Why do you say Elohim? So what what the, what, what the Targum says over here, right? Onkelos. Um, he said it's talking about what? It's talking about Rav Reve. What does that mean? Uh, Malachim, right? Angels, right? So what does that mean? You fought with the angels and you also defeated the angels. Which angel did he defeat? The Satan. That's, that's the idea, you understand? So by the way, this corroborates what we said last week or whatever. We said, right, that what? That the Zohar Kadosh says that when it says, right, Vayavo Elohim, when Elohim came to Bil'am or, or to Lavan to speak with them, this was, a, was actually the Satan who came to speak with them. Meaning what? That the Satan came as a shliach of God, as a messenger of God, we said from the evil side, right? And, and this exactly corroborates that. That when it says over there, over here, Ella, means that, that Yaakov Avinu now, right, rose above all these challenges, whether it was a Satan, whether it was Esab, whether it was Lavan, he defeated everybody. So therefore now he got upgraded to a new name, Israel. By the way, you should know that these two names, when we say, right, that he got the new name, Israel, it doesn't mean that he lost the other one. The other name also stays. Yaakov doesn't go anywhere, right? As we already mentioned, by the way, right, that we said that, what, that when a person wants to change his name, you shouldn't uproot the first name, right? You should add a name. That's exactly what was done over here. It wasn't uprooted. Also if the first it was added. Is, also, if the first name is not Jewish? Good question. You see what he was asking? He's saying if they name the parents, uh, the, the child, a, a non a Goetia name, right, non-Jewish, then should he change the name or not, right? So the truth is, you know, you should know, by the way, that I see in the books something interesting, right? That there are Goetia names that have like very uh, par of implication. What does that mean? It's not really good, not really bad. Just like a regular name, you know? Like whatever, Tommy, whatever, you know, whatever. Eddie, you know, whatever. Like they call them, name like this, right? Alex, right? They call Alex, right? So the Alex, person, uh, right, Alex is a good name. Yeah, actually, it's a good name. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So the truth is that if a person has these names, he doesn't have to uproot them. Why? Because as long as they don't have a bad implication, he doesn't need to uproot. He can take also another name, Hebrew name. He can add a Hebrew name also. That's very good. They didn't give him a Hebrew name when he was when he was a kid. He can add it now. You know, that's also very nice. But if he if he uh, but if he has a Goetia name, it doesn't necessarily mean that he has to uproot that because it could be actually there's nothing wrong with that name. You understand? So there's no reason to uproot. The only time, as we said, right, you uproot the name is when it's a bad name, like Esad, Nimrod, you know, things like this. There are no crazy people who are doing these kind of things. You know what I'm talking about. Israelis, Israelis, you know, uh, they think that they're cool, whatever, you know. They're cool guys, you know, whatever. So they call these kinds of names, uh, you know, they're, they're bad boys, you know, bad boys. Okay, so anyway, Rotai, uh, getting back to what we're saying, is that uh, these two names, as we said, are still around. Yaakov and Israel. And they're brought down, by the way, in the prophets in many places. Brought down everywhere. It hasn't been uprooted. Huh? Yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And many people, right? Many big rabbis. So the question is, but I'm talking here about the nation of Israel, right? In other words, sometimes we're called Yaakov and sometimes we're called Israel in, in, the, in the prophets. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? Why does sometimes call, they call us Yaakov, Jacob, and sometimes they call us Israel? For what? Why, why do either this one or do the other one? What's, what's the, you know, what's it? So, you know, it's interesting that the Chazars say that these two names have two different implications, as we already said, right? What does that mean? The name Yaakov means, right, a person who's like a tricky guy, you know? He knows how to, he lives, in other words, he gets by in life by pulling, you know, tricks. You understand? Tricky, you know, subtle, you know. It doesn't mean he's a criminal, by the way. I, mean, I didn't say that. But you know he's very subtle. He knows how to play games. You know. What to Maybe do. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. But Israel, right? As we said, right? It's a different location, right? What? Justly, you get everything. You, you know, you don't have to do any tricks. You deserve everything because you're you're righteous, righteous person. And by the way, this is the two situations, and uh, the, the Chazal say that this represents two situations in Am Israel. What does that mean? Sometimes when the Jews are on a high level, you know, as a nation, right, observing the Torah and Mitzvot, so they're called Israel. Why? Because they're like, you know, they deserve to whatever they get. Sometimes it's Yaakov, you know, they pull tricks, you know, this, and you know, kinds of, you know Mossad, you know, all those kinds of, you know, they go and they kill this guy over there, they went over there, all kinds of tricks like this, they pull, you know, they, they trick this guy, they trick this guy. So there's two types of Israel, you understand? Two types of Jewish nation. There's Yaakov, you know, the lower level, you know, trickster, you know, 
And then Israel, everything by then you deserve. Sometimes we're like that, sometimes we're like this. You understand? Know depends on the situation. Depends on the generation that we're in. You know, it's, a, it's a different, two different nations. You know both of them, I'm sure. You've seen what this is, you've seen what that is. I don't have to tell you. You, have to, you understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So anyway, about that, it's a good thing to know. It's a good, a good thing to understand yeah, these concepts. Yeah. Not that we need both. You know, it's one or the other. It's just it's a, it's a matter of it's a matter of like you know what situation are we righteous as a nation or we're, are we not so righteous? You know, we're like down, you know, down and out. Mm -hmm. So if you're down and out, you're Yaakov because you can't survive without pulling tricks. You understand? But if you're if you're Israel, you don't need to pull tricks. You get everything by you know by by by, by merit. That's the, that's the difference. Okay. Anyway, uh, interesting thing, right? That now. The Satan admitted over here that what? That he deserves the brachot that he took from Esav. And the, the Bechorah, the firstborn right, everything he took rightly, rightly so. Why? Because since he was with Laban for 20 years and didn't do one sin, you know, that shows that everything he, he took, he deserved rightfully so. So there's nothing to anymore to contest, you understand? In other words, Esav has no right to be angry with Yaakov anymore. Mm. There's no, there's no basis for that anymore. You understand? But we're talking about what? We're talking about in that generation. But as we already said, right, that one. That if there is a generation where the Jews are not doing so good, they're down and out, not keeping to our mitzvot, so then Yaakov has also, now Esav has a, has, has a reason to complain. You understand? So it comes back to the struggle again. You know, Esav comes and says, listen, you know, you're, you Jews, you know, you tell me, you tell us you're the chosen people, but you, you don't act like that. <laughs> yeah. So you know, don't try, to, don't pull off this stuff to me. You know, chosen people. You know, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, there was a, there was a. You want to hear a, an example of this, by the way, which was like about thirty years ago. It was it was a terrible situation, by the way, in that, at that time. Baruch Hashem, now things are better. You know, hopefully that we won't go back to we won't re regress back to the, what it was there. What happened was that this, uh, you know, the, the first Bush, you know, the the the, the president, the father, father, the father, yeah. He was an anti-Semite, this guy, you know? He, wasn't, he didn't love Jews, this guy, you know, whatever. Yes and no, you know, he had like two things that are going on there, you understand? In other words, in, in, in one sense, he was friendly with Jews, but Israel, you know, as a nation, he didn't like so much, whatever. So anyway, the point was that he was pushing, you know, the Jews to make compromises with the Palestinians, give land, this and that, whatever. So what happened was that he was trying to find, you know, at that time, the Shamir was the, the you know, prime minister, you know? Shamir was a very tough guy, you know? He was stubborn like a mule, you know, they wouldn't budge to anything. <laughs> so Bush was looking for some way to get, inf you know, in infiltrate his personality, to make him soften him up, you know, a little bit, you know. He was looking for something. Maybe he has a hobby that he likes to do, you know, whatever, to try to, you know, to like, he was trying to look at his personality to see if he can find something, a soft spot, you know, because he was like iron, like iron fist, this guy, you know. He was a very tough guy. So what happened was that in the end... It was the Rosh Lehi. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 yes, yes. So, Shamir, right? Shamir, Shamir. I remember. The short guy, the short guy. The short guy. The short guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was the horse. horse yeah, yeah, he was a uh, difficult guy. Yeah. So, what happened was like this, right? That, uh, no, but. In the end, what, was, what, was, what, what happened? So, Bush decides to invite him to the White House, you understand? Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to make like a nice dinner, you know, nice uh, get together, you know, have a nice banquet together, this and that, whatever. So now look at Bush now. Bush is a smart guy, clever guy. What does he do? He tells, he, he calls up the Israeli government, you know, and he tells them, he says, listen, you know, to Washington, D.C., there's a Jewish city called, you know, Baltimore. There's a lot of Jews there. I'll bring black kosher everything food, you know. This way you can come eat by us. Understand? Mm -hmm. And everything's black kosher. The public didn't know about this? this is it, 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 it got out, it got out, it got out, oh, yes, yes. Oh. People who were, who were yeah. <clears throat> so he says, you know what, I'm bringing everything from Baltimore Catering. Everything's going to be black kosher. Come, let's have dinner together, everything. So what happens? The stupidest thing that they did, right? It's such a foolish thing. They come and, right, what was the answer that they gave? They said, no, no need, no need. They said, just serve the regular food. We're coming to eat anyway. Yes, that's what they said. Wow. Maybe Chil Hashem like this. Chil Hashem, you know? That's the creator again. We got like well, this. Shamir wasn't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying. Uh, so what do they do? They tell, they tell Bush, no, no, no need. We'll come and eat whatever you make. Whatever you eat, we'll eat. <laughs> that's, 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 that's,
<laughs> yeah. So this was the Chil Hashem. Yeah. Why, why, why do I tell you this, but by the way? Menachem yeah. Begin was not like this. Yes, he was better. Yes, it's, it's true. Was, uh, he was, he, you, know, you know why? Because Begin learned in Yeshiva when he was a kid. He was, he was, yeshiva, oh, yeah? he was a Yeshiva boy. Yeah. He had a background. Like, like the Jimmy. You know, like the, yeah. Okay, so I mean, <laughs> that was different. You understand? When you have a Jewish education, you're not the same person as the person who doesn't have a Jewish education. It's all education, by the way. Everything is education. So uh, the thing was like this, right? That once Bush saw that, that they didn't even want to eat kosher food, he knew that he had now a way to, you know, to wow. get in. Understand? This was a sign for him that there was a weak spot there. Understand? So uh, you, you see from there, by the way. Uh, and I'll tell you something. The same thing happened also with, with Sharon. You know, Sharon, also same thing, right? There was this, now the son Bush, the son. You understand? The son was a better guy, by the way. He was a better guy. But same thing happened over there. What happened over there? They wanted to, them to evacuate Aza, you know, Gaza, whatever. So what happened was that he invites now Shalom. Right. Yeah, yeah. Gaza, yeah. Shalom, that was Gush Katir. Right. Gush Katir is Gaza. So they, they went, they, uh, they, uh, so what happened was that now also Bush decides to make, to invite Sharon to the White House. You understand? So what does he do? He makes a barbecue for the guy. So he comes and eats, you know, his barbecue, you know, Texas meat, you know. Uh, same right. thing, you understand? Some of it is kosher, by the way, Texas. Uh, uh, whatever, you know, so that's what happened, you understand? So, the, 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 uh, and then you know what happened, right? The rest is history, you know? They gave him over Gaza, you know, the evacuation, this was a terrible thing. You see, every time that the Jews are not keeping, you know, the also in public, you know, desecrating the name of God. This is a weak spot, you know? Uh, uh, exactly, exactly. Exactly, Shalom. So we see from here, Rabbi that it's all, you know, relative, it can change, it's changeable, you know. Just because, by the way, you should know, just because now they're being nice to us, doesn't mean they'll be nice to, nice to us next year. Mm-hmm. Every year is something different, you understand? Know you cannot take it for granted, anything. You know, you shouldn't think, oh, now they're being so nice, you know, it's probably going to be like that forever, until Mashiach comes. Don't d- depend on that, right? Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't bet on it. Right, you know, so even even by the way, you know the, the the Reagan who was also very you know he loved Israel, he was a big uh, Jewish lover, you know. Is that why but he, he went to visit the uh, Nazi uh, graves? Right. So what yeah. happened was that uh, you know in the end it wasn't like that anymore. You know why? Because mm-hmm. the, the, the the spy thing with Pollard he got caught and this and that, and then all of a sudden they turned against. You know, so the, you see from there, by the way, that you can never rely on anything. You know, all you have to rely on what? On Torah and Mitzvot. If we're keeping Torah and Mitzvot, that's what we rely on. Don't rely on the kindness of this nation or that nation or this president or that president. You know, while they're good, give them credit. You know, give them, give them a pat on the back. No, no, nothing wrong with that, right? But, you know, I have to know that it's not going to last forever, man. It may not last forever. You never know what's going to be. Same thing, by the way, was in the, in the Persian Empire. You know, since you mentioned it, right? That what? Some of the kings were very good to the Jews, the, king, the Persian kings. Some of them were, were very bad. You know, so it depends, you know, sometimes it can jump from here to there. Mm-hmm. You never know what's going to be, right? The first king, Cyrus, Koresh, right, was, was, was very good. Very good yeah. You know, he, he started to build the Beit HaMikdash. He agreed that the Jews should go back and build it. He was a good guy, right? He, and by the way, he listened to God because God wrote to him in the prophecy that he should do this. So he did it, you know, he, he did it. He, he, whatever the prophecy said, he fulfilled it. Not exactly to the T, by the way. There were some things that he lacked, but still, still, he did, he did some of it. So then comes after that, right? Achashverosh, bad guy, right? And starts to afflict the Jews, almost wipe them out, like Hitler, you understand? Achashverosh. You know? And then comes the son of Achashverosh, who was Dariavesh, he was good, good, good to the Jews, right? He allowed the Beit HaMikdash to be built and finished. So you see, you know, it goes back and forth. You never know what, what's going to be. You can't rely on a foreign power, you understand? To, you know, you can't rely, rely on that. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Dariavesh was the son of Esther? There was two Dariavesh, right. There was the first Dariavesh, who was before that. And then the son of Esther, the second one was Dariavesh. Right, Dari that was the son of Esther, right, exactly. It was the son of Ahasuerus, right? That was the Dariavesh that, that built the Beit HaMikdash. He was technically, he was, he, he was a Jew, he was a Jew, but he wasn't practicing as a Jew. He wasn't living as a Jew, but he was Jewish, yeah, he was Jewish. Yeah, that's, that's the way he was. He was technically speaking, he was, the guy was a Jew. But Rabbi Tai, I want to end off. There's a lot more to discuss about this, but next week, it's not going to get it on one shot. But, you know, there's one thing important to know uh, regarding this. The people think, by the way, that, you know, when a boy is nice to you, a non-Jew or whatever, you know, that, that has some kind of a meaning. He's a good man, he's not a good man, whatever, all these things. The truth is, you should know, by the way, that it's not really so true, this. You know why? 
Because if a guy is going to be nice to you or nasty to you or against you or with you, you know, like this, the Bush, the father, the son, Trump, you know, everybody has a different policy. You know what I mean? So the question is, the bottom line is, why is that so, by the way? You know, why is this one against, this one is for? You know, Obama was very against. You know, he was very tough. You know, Obama but you said was he very difficult. A lot of money. Mm-hmm. That's also true. It's also true. You remember what I asked Everything you? is true. You don't have to give credit for everything, you know? Yeah. Uh, but he was also, you know, did a lot of things against. Yeah, but him. why would he send you that kind of money? Yeah. It's like, you know, they have to take a double policy. It's a double faced, you know? Oh, yeah. One here, one there, really you know? Want good cop, bad cop. You understand? It's a good cop, bad cop policy. If he, if That's he what really it is. really wanted to punish uh, the Jews in Israel, in yeah. Israel itself, yeah. The best way to do it is to cut off the financial support. Right, but then, then he cannot do. He cannot do that. So that's, so that's, there's all kinds of you know things there. They, you mean you know, they didn't let? They wouldn't let him. They wouldn't let him do it because there's a lot of Jews in the Democratic Party. There's a lot of things there going. There's a lot of politics there going yeah. on. There. So how did he really yeah. hurt Israel, huh? Obama during the eight years? How I'm sorry. How did he hurt Israel? Uh, well, you know, because idealistically he was against it. I'll tell you how he hurt. The number one, first of all, at, at the UN, he made a resolution against you know Israel and, and before he left. He also gave a lot of money to the enemies of Jews, you know, Iran, the Palestinians. They all did. That. He gave them a lot of money. No, he gave them. They a lot. All did he that. gave them billions of dollars, yeah. much more than everybody else. Yeah, that's the problem uh, with this country. Well, it always the plays the. Also, separate. you know, they were they were trying to destabilize the government, you know, in, in Israel. You know, he he, uh, he actually uh, Obama, you know, he actually uh, he he colluded against Netanyahu, yeah, trying to bring him down. You know what I'm talking about? Tell me what I was saying. What I'm telling you is like this. Before we before we stop, I just want to make the point. Right, that one. That the Zohar Kadosh says something very important about this, very amazing, right? That what? That when you see a, a certain way that a goy behaves towards you, it's not because of the goy's personality or whatever. It's because the angel, right, the, the of that of that goy of that nation, is telling him what to do. The angel tells them what to do. You know. So if the if the angel now decides to be good to you, that person will also also be good to you because he's taking the instructions from the angel. The goy, every every, every goy has an angel. Protective angel. So they're just doing basically the bidding of the angel that, that tells them what to do. It's not really their decision so much. It's the decision of the angel more. The, the you know, protective angel. You understand? So what does that mean? That means that you could, you should never really, you know, take it too seriously. You know, if they're being good to you or not being good yeah. to you. It's just a temporary thing, you know? It can go up, it can go down. It's nothing which, uh, which yeah, is, it's has any... No question about it. Yeah, no question about it. No question about it. Anyway, but I, we have to know... That you know, there's there's a rule, right? And, and, and the Torah tells us, "En al rishayin, el al alim rishamayim." We only have to rely on our, our Father in heaven, right? That's the only thing we have to rely on. We never rely on any goy, Rabbi, any nation, any 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 non-Jew, whatever. We only rely on a Kadosh Baruch Hu, and that's it. That's the only thing we rely on. Yes,